The church's rules for preaching are kind of strict when it comes to Sunday. Sunday, we are only supposed to preach what are the progressive readings of that Sunday, whether the first two and then the gospel, which, which is the third reading. This is what we call a homily. A homily is quite different from a sermon. A sermon you can use practically any, any particular topic you want, as long as it has something to do with religion, whether it's morality or dogma or even politics that has to do with religion. But a homily we are supposed to follow on Sundays, not necessarily during the week. So you go to a parish mission, you go to a parish uh, um, novena, something like that, the priest is free to preach on anything religious. Now, sometimes these um, readings are extensive and yield the possibility of many themes to be examined. Today's readings are short, and they're limited by their respective themes. You win by this, because as, as, as King Henry VIII said to his third wife, I won't be with you long. I'm not learned enough, really, to come, or perhaps holy enough, to come up with more than two themes in today's readings, because, after all, these are almost infinite. There's practically infiniteness in all of these things. But the first and second readings illuminate the first theme, reliance on our Lord, and the gospel emphasizes the second theme, which would be humility. Now, long before the coming of our Lord, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that he will come in order to offer himself to God the Father as an expiation for our sins through his emptying of himself for us, through his suffering. In other words, he showed that a human is one to be totally human in the sense God's idea of it is one who empties himself, as Jesus did. He will do this because he is one of us and our high priest who is without sin and is pleasing to God. But as he empties himself for us, he shows us we must empty ourselves for him. And that is what we call humility. Now, humility is a virtue. What is a virtue? Virtue is a power. So humility is the power of accepting the truth about ourselves, the truth about ourselves, the reality about ourselves. What exactly are we? We are God's creatures, created by him for a specific purpose. What is that purpose? That we'd be happy with God for eternity in heaven. Some of you remember the old Baltimore Catechism. You know, not bad to this day. Why did God make us? God made us to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to be happy with him forever in heaven. And that says it all, because everything else is non-real. God is reality itself. And when God created us, we share in his reality. But we can come up with all kinds of things that are not reality, and we, we, we are guilty then of self-deception. We gain our true identity by losing our personal identity as something that is apart from Christ. Our personal identity is an illusion if it is not identified with Christ or with God, whether explicitly or implicitly, because it is something that God did not create. For example, God created the human race. Obviously, it's implicit in that creation and realistic that we have to eat we have to get married, we have to, uh, we, we get sick, we have to get well, and all of these various things. But there's an awful lot about us that is not true. It's self-delusion, because it is not created by God. The gospel gives us an example of James and John here. Beloved of Jesus as they are, they are delusional in their request that they sit at the right hand and left hand of Christ in heaven. Now, albeit, 
In another evangelist, I think it's St. Matthew, I should believe, the request is made by the mother out of concern for her boys. But it is still delusional because it is not a request that God has created, nor wants. If God doesn't want it, it really has no reality. Rather, that they desire to... Comp- and it, and also, I would say, the, uh, the desire to compete with the other apostles. Well, you know, wouldn't you be outraged? If, suppose you're, you're somewhere, you're equal to everybody else, and you go up to the boss and say, I want to be first. Well, you're going to be there. You're, hey, how about me? You know, well, both are delusions. The other disciples resent their request, therefore, and are equally out of order because their very resentment is delusioned as the request, as the, as the request itself is, a, is a unrealistic. Jesus requires humility, the power to throw off all in us that God did not create or God is not associating himself with us. It's, it's not real. It's, it's an unreality. It's not true. And humility means to accept all of those things that are not true about ourselves and to admit them. We have got to empty ourselves. That's what God's idea of us is. As Jesus emptied himself, we have got to empty ourselves. To be totally human in in God's sense of the word, in God's purpose, is self-empty. Sounds paradoxical, doesn't it? How do you gain yourself? By emptying yourself. That's how we gain heaven. That's how we gain the goal for which we were created. Otherwise, everything is unreality. So I would say, since Jesus does require this humility to throw off all that God did not create, and therefore is unreal, how do we achieve this? Through prayer, through constant awareness of God in our lives. That's why we're here. Let us through prayer, that's why St. Paul could say, pray always, constantly. Let us through prayer set our will on Jesus and what he wants. That's truth. In fact, it's the only truth.